So welcome everybody. Hope everybody's still awake. Um, so today we have a fired side chat about Facebook as a gaming platform, and we're basically going to focus on um, uh, what Facebook is in terms of partnerships, the discoverability of the platform, and what strategies uh, prove to be successful with the platform. On my right hand side, we have Bob Slynn. Uh, Bob is the head of gaming uh, partnerships at Facebook. He's focusing on Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Uh, prior to joining Facebook, Bob served as a, a senior director of publishing at EA in uh, California. And before that, he worked at Yahoo. Um, so, Bob. You work with a lot of developers, uh, different sizes, different kinds of games, uh, casual games to core games probably. Can you tell a little bit about your role at Facebook and what your focus is? Sure. No, absolutely, Martin. Happy to do that. Uh, so essentially at Facebook, as Martin explained, um, our key mission really is to work with developers across Europe and Middle East and Africa and really look at, regardless of the platform they're on, figure out how we can help them to develop and, and scale their games experiences. Uh, so as you said, we work with a uh, range of small developers. We also work with midsize, and then really some of the biggest developers out there all work with Facebook, uh, both on Facebook.com and also uh, on mobile cross-platform. Perfect. So what would you say is um, what would be the best game, the best showcase for a platform okay. that you have seen the the past six months? Okay. Yeah. No. I I mean, there's obviously there's a lot of great games, uh, so I wouldn't want to pick the best game because there's, yeah, there's some amazing titles out there. Um, I think there's a couple of things to call out. I mean, obviously what we really look for uh, is use of the Facebook platform and really making sure that people take advantage of all the tools the platform makes available. Um, and also one of the things we're really working with is a, a broad range of genres and different game types. So I just want to call out um, a game called Sparta, which is built by Plarium, who are based in Israel. Okay. Uh, Really, you know, great example of using the platform effectively. Uh, this is the fourth title that they've they've brought out on Facebook, um, and it's really proven. I think two things. One is you can you can make the strategy genre, sort of the mid-core strategy genre, work uh, with a social context and also for a broader base. Um, so definitely, you know, really, really one of the best examples of that. And then uh, I also want to call it a game called Cower Defense, which probably not very many have heard of, but. Uh, <laughs> It's built by a, a Belarusian developer, and it's essentially a tower defense mechanic, but uh, it has cows as the main characters. And, uh, but it's beautifully done, high quality graphics, very social, um, and again, a nice spin on a different genre and shows that you can really continue to scale with, uh, with original content and, and great, uh, great gameplay. Yeah, okay, that sounds interesting. So with your view and expertise on all the partnerships in Europe, for example, yeah. um, what can you share to the audience in terms of how a partnership with Facebook looks like? I mean, can you give examples? For example, I mean, um, are there certain opportunities to be made with yeah. Facebook? I mean, how, yeah, how yeah. does that look? So, I mean, it, it's important to state that we, as much as we work very actively with developers, it's very much Facebook's a self-service platform. So, you know, anyone can build a game on Facebook.com. Um, anyone can and hopefully will use all the different features we have for mobile developers. So. You know, Facebook login, we have a bunch of back-end solutions. So essentially, it's completely self-serve. So by, we, we really don't have anything that we need to sign in the sense of individual contracts. Okay. Um, so we're very much encouraging as many developers as possible to use the different elements of the platform, whatever will help them build or grow. Um, so really, I mean, we have, again, we work more closely with some of the bigger developers really to help them scale. But we also do a lot of things like this where we come to events and try to reach as many developers as possible to share really the different features and products that the developers can use to grow. Yeah. Do you also like give them advice on uh, like game design, monetiz monetization, player retention? Is that something you do as well as Facebook, or is that too micro level in a way? Um, we're doing more and more of that. To be, to be fair, we obviously our first role is to help people optimize the social features Facilitate, that they yeah. integrate in the game. Yeah. Um, but we do more and more, and we're actually doing more and more outreach to uh, and it's really, again, we, we can't, you know, developers know best, and people in this room know best how to make a great game. But we are trying to share where we see best practice or innovation. Um, and we actually have a group on Facebook with all the developers across EMEA, so it's a completely open group. Um, and we're publishing things regularly with uh, the latest is, you know, optimizing monetization or 
using requests are two good examples of things we've published recently. So again, we're, yeah, we are doing more and more of that. Yeah. So you're obviously focusing on different regions, yeah. uh, Middle East, Africa, Europe. Um, how is working with companies in the various territories? For example, yeah. I think we have a lot of people here from the Nordic countries, Western Europe. Do you see like a perhaps a cultural difference in working with these companies, or do you see a difference in, for example, how people, how game developers monetize games? Um, it's probably less a question of different monetization. It's more, but it does differ significantly from a regional basis. So, if you look, obviously, uh, you know, the Nordic countries very, very much focused on mobile development, uh, and you know, some of the earliest adopters of all the mobile technologies. Interestingly, if you look at uh, a market like Russia or generally Eastern Europe. Because of the Russian social networks, you have a, a legacy of a lot of developers who built first for the Russian social networks and then are coming to Facebook to reach global audiences. So that's a very, you know, very different trend. We're seeing a lot of really, really high quality development in games coming out of that region. Um, Israel, I think, you know, more broadly is a tech hotspot. So we see exactly, yeah. a lot of big developers and a lot of developers in the uh, social casino space. Playtika uh, is a great example of you know, a huge developer based in Israel representing Caesars Interactive. So, Again, Israel tends to be very, very dynamic for us. And then Western Europe, um, a lot of our traditional kind of historical developers started on Canvas. People like King, Wuga, Social Point, all have started in, on Canvas on Facebook and then have built cross-platform businesses and have you know, seen huge success on mobile. Yeah. Okay. So Facebook offers, obviously, uh, it, it's a huge platform. It offers yeah. the, the, the much needed reach, discoverability. Uh, visibility, obviously, in, in stores and whatnot, but it's obviously not the only platform out there. Yeah. So, why yeah. should a game developer develop games for Facebook? I mean, what are the incentives? Okay. So, I, I guess there's, there's kind of two parts to the the answer, in the sense that you know, one part of it is what we're really trying to encourage developers to do is is build their games cross-platform. And when you think of Facebook, ultimately, um, when you think of our move to mobile, we're ultimately an app, admittedly a very big app, but I mean. Our big focus, again, from our own side, is we've had to figure out how to build across all the different mobile platforms. You know, of Apple, Google, everyone else. So we've focused a lot internally on trying to build tools that go across platforms. So that's one of the things that when we think about Facebook as a platform for developers is making sure we have a lot of really rich cross-platform features. Um, everything, as I said, from login is a great way to facilitate syncing across platform. Um, we have a bunch of back-end solutions. We have push notifications. Um, and all those features really help make it easier for developers. We've also done um, work with our SDK with Unity and Cocos 2D, again, to facilitate that. Yep. Um, so I think that's really the key thing that we're pushing. And also, if you're a developer and you're building on mobile first, think about the incremental audience that you can reach if you bring your game to Facebook.com as a sort of a, a third platform and a way to think about that as well. Yeah, exactly, because you're referring to multi-platform. I mean, I'm curious because Facebook started out as, as purely web-based. Yep. Um, so how does the, um, what, what, what would you say is the current state of desktop gaming on Facebook compared to mobile? Yeah, no, it's a good point. Uh, I mean, I think if you look at Facebook as a whole, we've obviously made the move to become a mobile first company. In this yep. you know, we really, 62% of our revenues, advertising revenues last quarter came from uh, mobile. Um, and again, the whole company is now very, very focused on building um, mobile and then cross-platform. Uh, when you look at games, I mean, games and uh, payments directly on Facebook.com, st it's still a very big part of our business. About 9% of our revenues come directly from, from the games business. So, you know, hugely strategic, hugely important for us. And um, as mentioned, I th we really see, we have developers in certain regions who are coming to the platform first. We have other developers who, you know, may have been building only on mobile um, and are bringing their games to Facebook. Um, as a way to kind of extend the reach. I mean, good examples. Cookie Jam is a top grossing title by SGN. Yep. They recently brought their game to Canvas. They saw incremental, significant incremental growth. Um, you know, again, Kim Kardashian, a game I think most of you have probably played or certainly heard of, uh, built by Glue Mobile. That's also now on Facebook Canvas. So I think what we're seeing is this, it's, for a lot of developers, it's an opportunity, again, with the viral channels we have to uh, extend and reach a new audience and, and drive incremental revenue. Yeah. Can you share some numbers in terms of platforms, in terms of reach? Um, uh, or is that difficult? Yeah. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. So we have about 375 million people playing Facebook connected games across platform every month. Um, and we did about, generated about 3 billion in um, in app payments last year. And again, so 2.2 billion of that goes to developers. So again, you know, material and 
I, the other point to make is we had 100 developers making over a million dollars last year. Yeah. OK. Very, uh, very interesting. Yeah. Impressive. So if we zoom more into mobile, um, there are obviously thousands and thousands of games yeah. in, in the App Store. And I think the majority of game developers face the same problem. That's discovery. Mm -hmm. And that's finding good users. I mean, you can find users, obviously, but it needs to be good yeah. users. Um, so what do you believe is a successful uh, strategy um, to enable a better visibility, yeah. um, driving more installs, and having a better user retention? Yeah, yeah I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of things you, you can do. And I mean, I, again, talking to, to experts in this room, um, from our side, what we really try to do is, is, again, with some of the features that we have, um, login being the first, I'd say the other really big one to think about from a kind of game design standpoint is requests, really the ability to send, I can send you a gift or ask for help in a game. That Again, that works across whatever platform you're on as long as you have the game, the developer makes the game available. So that's a great way to drive incremental installs and also uh, drive re-engagement for, for players. Because again, we all know how challenging it is and any way you can build those social loops in your game, uh, it's a great way to re-engage players. It also helps you uh, create a blended, you know, lower blended CPI if you're looking at, at trying to drive installs specifically. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you believe is the one thing that um, all game developers should incorporate in their roadmap for uh, 2015, perhaps 2016? Yeah. So, I think there's, from our side, certainly, there's there's two big things we're focusing on. Um, one of these is really looking at analytics. And so we have a product called App Events, which you can easily plug in your game. You can set up a bunch of predefined actions. So I finished the tutorial, uh, day one retention, first purchase. Um, and that's really, really easy to use. And it's a complement to other analytics solutions. And what that also allows you to do is, if you're, ever, if you're buying media and, and on, uh, on Facebook, which is one of the you know, very highly targeted, you can use that data to easily generate custom audiences uh, or look like audiences, which are two really powerful tools. So that's definitely, um, I think, one of the big things you should be thinking about. The other thing is, um, depending on the type of game you have, uh, you may have a couple percent of people who are actually paying. Yeah. And we now have an audience network, which we've rolled out, which is a great way to help monetize the other you know, 90 plus percent of players, uh, which is essentially taking all the Facebook targeting and allowing you to serve those ads into your game. Yep. OK, perfect. We're almost there. So. Um after this uh, fireside chat, if you want to talk to Bob, yeah. I, I think you're available, right? Yeah, I'm around. For some uh, questions, all day he's also morning. keen to talk to developers. Yeah. So uh, feel Great. free to contact Bob after this fireside chat. Perfect. Thank you very Thanks, much. Martin. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Enjoy Thank the show. You.